Hi guys, Alan White here. I have been playing around with uh, Zoom's green screen capabilities today and uh, pleased to report that I've got sort of a working setup going here. So I want to show you a little bit about my setup. Uh, I used to do this uh, for video productions uh, back when I was doing video editing. Uh, so I learned a couple things and um, some, of that, some of that carries over that could be useful to you. Uh, if you want to play around with this at home, it's fun. So first of all, let me show you the difference between um, Zoom, like with and without green screen, if you want to simulate the background. So I've got a couple other tools that I'm using to tweak things, but I'll also try to show you my setup. So with no virtual background, that's what this looks like. Um, I've done a really poor job <laughs> of, uh, of uh, positioning the fabric. I'm gonna reposition it later. I've got two strips. I went to uh, Joanne Fabrics and uh, the fabric I got cost a little more than I had hoped, uh, so I'm a little bummed about that, but uh, it is good fabric, it is very smooth. The good news is, Zoom is extremely forgiving of the color that you give it. Uh, so normally, um, traditionally with video production, um, you have a very specific hue that is a color of the green, That's you've gotta nail that, and it needs to be as even as possible. So looking at this right here, um, I've got I've got a, a window right next to me that's giving this light. It's a little bit cold right here. I've got a studio light with an umbrella over here that's got a daylight bulb um, that is actually not quite as cold as that. So it, it, if this is a real video shoot, uh, this would be probably causing problems for the editor. But fortunately, this is just fun with Zoom. So um, Zoom is pretty forgiving. Now the cool thing about Zoom, oh, okay, first of all, let me show you this without a green screen. So if I'm gonna do the fake green screen, um, okay, yeah, it's not so bad, but notice the blobbiness around my head. Notice what, what we would call uh, compositing artifacts around my fingers here. My daughter just came by with her hair kind of waving around and it was like, it was a total mess. Also notice that parts of my seat, like I really don't know how Zoom is guessing. I think it has an algorithm that is, a, that is like guessing what a human looks like maybe might be doing some other motion related things uh, to kind of, but you see my head, head's the back of my chair popping in and out. So that shouldn't happen with a green screen because when I hit the green screen button, boom, look at that. Very, very smooth, No, almost no compositing artifacts. They're doing a good job of what we in the video industry would call uh, de-spilling. So notice there, instead of it being green around my fingers and, and around my hair and stuff, it's now, um, it, it's basically, uh, neutralizing that color. So it's, it's pretty smart. It's, it's, this is a pretty good green screen algorithm. And uh, oh look, since my daughter came home and kicked me out of my office, there is a photo of my actual office uh, <laughs> that she is now using for her bedroom. Uh, very cool. And uh, you know, we got some of these stock ones. I've got a couple other loops that I've used over the years. This is a, a clip I used from uh, an anima uh, a presentation on animation in user experience that I did. Um, kind of a fun background just to add it up. This is some video I shot of some leaves uh, during the spring. We're hitting the spring. Oh, and look, there's Portland looking really good. So let me show you some of this other stuff uh, that the way I set this up. So you're like, what's this tool? So I have an external webcam and uh, that external webcam is a Logitech. Um, I can't read what model it is, but it's a pro one. Uh, it's, they're not that expensive, um, but the, it does give you a lot of capabilities that the built-in, like if you've got a Mac, the built-in FaceTime cam doesn't have. It's, I, I think it's generally better quality. That's improving, but Apple has never really done a great job of investing in, the, in their front-facing uh, webcams. Um, but Logitech makes, oh yeah, here it is, the C C920. Logitech makes a control panel utility. They also have this for Windows um, that enables you to do some things like position yourself. Um, and you'll notice here, like if I go back to restore defaults, it's gonna, it's gonna mess everything up. Oh, there it is. Now you're seeing how the sausage is made. You're seeing the reality here. I didn't quite make a large enough green screen. It's a wide angle view. It's a little bright. Uh, the Normally the auto white balance, um, it, like with the, just the yellow wall, it's really off. It used to be around here and that looks pretty terrible. So this control panel um, does let me uh, dial in some of those things. Like I'm gonna adjust the brightness. Um, you can play with color intensity. I, I like to bump the contrast up just a hair. There we go. And then I'm gonna go back to home. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in like this. So this is kind of cool in that it lets me, it's actually capturing an HD frame. 
Um, you don't need all of HD to do a decent Zoom meeting. Um, that's not necessary. You can you can zoom in a little bit, uh, prop it down, some even hit the. If you look at your Zoom tools here, you can uncheck Enable HD, and you'll notice it goes it zooms in. It's a little soft. Um, you might want to play with these settings yourself, but basically I'm doing a combination. This is upstream from Zoom, so this is actually controlling the, the, the output of the webcam to whatever app it's using. This is an actual Zoom broadcast uh, that I'm just using to simulate um, what's going on right now um, because I wanted to see the final output, and then I've got some clips over here. So this image is looking pretty good. Like, look at, look at your flesh tones. Uh, most ethnicities are all in the orange hue zone. So it's funny when when, when I was doing color correction for video, um, actually you have a, a special hue of orange that you're trying to nail, um, that you're trying to get. You don't want that to be, let's turn this off. You don't want that to be too cold or too orangey or red. You kind of want it, but actually it's kind of a shade of orange that you want to do. But if you have this ability, great. If not, you know, you can, uh, uh, I don't know. Zoom, Zoom will take your background into consideration. When I had a very yellow background, it made my skin too blue on auto. So if that's a problem for you, then maybe look at what your background is. Typically, I like to have um, a neutral background for meetings. Um, I kind of threw this together for a couple people uh, because I was trying to help them with the blobby background that they were having. Um, this is just a work one that I've been using. Here's a cool... So um, what I want to, uh, what was next? I was going to say something next. Um, yeah, so uh, basically to sum up, uh, a huge difference between um, the uh, green screen and the and Zoom's sort of fake green screen virtual background. Would this work in a pinch? Yes. Personally, I think it's distracting enough. Obviously, that background is very distracting, so maybe uh, let's pick something a little more simple. But in, in my opinion, uh, using the virtual background is, I don't want to say it's unprofessional, but it's not something that I would choose to use. Um, if you can get a green screen background going, that's great. I'm looking at the blobby version right here. It's not too bad. I think people are probably going to get used to seeing that. but. Uh, you know, it, it's funny how we're, we're choosing our office spots now at working remote by the backgrounds as opposed to by the background, like the, the arrangement of our, you know, frames and house and everything uh, in order to optimize that. So this is one way to work around that. Um, go crazy, go Martha Stewart uh, with your backgrounds with the virtual one. Uh, so, you know, I've got a, I've been picking a couple of these. I like to blur the backgrounds too because that gives it a fake depth of field is another, is a photographic term. Uh, because uh, that that makes it look like it's further back in space. What it also does is it reduces the distracting. This is what you like in good portrait photography or good cinematography with people in it. Um, you want the people sharp and the background blurry. Um, it usually takes really expensive lenses to do that, so it's really kind of cool to be able to simulate that. Um, <laughs> I'm obviously having way too much fun uh, with this right now uh, because I really really like the effect. So uh, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to try this in a couple meetings. Um, I'm really, really happy with the, the, the matting, uh, the keying that is. Like there's, it's pretty close to perfect for real time. One last note, uh, one thing I was worried about when I was started playing with this with Zoom was uh, I was worried that it was going to, when I was presenting, I'm going to take a lot of this, it was going to hit the CPU. That means that it was going to slow my computer down. Uh, the good news is in my tests, um, pulled up activity monitor and looked at it with and without green screen. This is all being done on the graphics card. So that's the GPU. So uh, that's uh, basically most modern computers, they have you know, um, a pretty strong GPU. They can do this on the GPU without affecting your CPU. So that means that it's going to be incredibly efficient and you should see no hit at all uh, unless you're doing some other GPU intensive activity, 3D modeling. Um, real-time video stuff with another app you know if you're just presenting slides even if they have like embedded video and stuff it should be totally fine you should see no difference now the next level that I don't know how to do in something like zoom is to actually composite my image over my slides that would be super cool now I would probably want to I don't know position it somehow uh, that obviously that like, garbage didn't work but like Move, move me over to the side and like that's a whole other domain that um, I'm not sure I'm ready to go into yet.
Okay, this is a quick tour of my work setup, and this is total gorilla. I've just hacked this together. I've got a daylight LED bulb there um, over here. I've got I've got my uh, my, my troops here that uh, my kids have left for me. Um, but yeah, a window here with with daylight, it's north facing, so the color is going to be pretty standard throughout the day. And then I've got this green screen set up, and over here I've got a large studio bulb from from photography there, and that's a day, another daylight bulb, just kind of bouncing some light on there. I'm still experimenting with that. Over here is one of my favorite things, and this guy is a, uh, it's a, it's a LED light that um, basically you can change the color temperature on. So notice the effect on my face there. It just got really yellow. Um, this is a great little desk lamp. I can't even find these anymore. I don't know why they stopped making them, but they're, re they're really cool. You can adjust the color temperature of it to match. Um, whatever it is you're doing and I use it as a fill light you can see there my face just got really dark I use it as a fill light to pop it in uh, and kind of fill that in um, that's kind of a traditional video lighting technique so uh, that's a quick tour of my uh, my current zoom meeting green screen setup um, I hope you've enjoyed it I'd love to hear uh, I'd love to hear any suggestions you have obviously this is all very DIY gorilla style um, kind of thrown together, so there's always things that can be improved. Um, but uh, love to hear any comments you have. Uh, thanks for watching.